Welcome to 20 Every Studio. Today I'm going to be showing you how to set up and use a controller with Dolphin on Android to play Nintendo Wii games. If you want to know how to set up and install Dolphin on Android, check the links in the description for all my Android emulation tutorials. For this tutorial, I'll be using the Razer Kishi controller, but this also works with a PS4, PS5 and any Xbox controller. The biggest problem with emulating Nintendo Wii games is motion controls. While the absolute best way to play these games is by using the original controllers, you can emulate them with a standard controller and it's still very good. Another issue is there are so many different variations that it can be very confusing. So today I'm going to focus on the Wiimote Nunchuck configuration, focusing on Super Mario Galaxy and Super Mario Galaxy 2. Now before we begin, I hate doing this kind of thing so I'll be quick, but 99% of my viewers are not subscribed to the channel and I understand why. You get the information you need and you don't need me again. So I'm not going to ask you to subscribe, although it will help, but I am going to ask you to hit the like button if you find the information useful. Sorry to be that guy, let's get back to the tutorial. So let's take a look at setting up our controller for games like Super Mario Galaxy and Super Mario Galaxy 2 using the Remote Nunchuck configuration. Now, like I've said previously, with Nintendo Wii games, there are so many different controller configurations that you don't use these same controls for each game. For example, Kirby's Epic Yarn uses it in the Wii side modes configuration, and there's a link in the description to show you how to sort that out. And Skyward Sword uses the Wii Nunchuck configuration, but it has completely different controls to Super Mario Galaxy and Super Mario Galaxy 2. So there's no point going into the settings, going into Wii Import, going to Wii Remote 1 and emulating, and just setting up one control system for all the different games so what we do is we set up a control system for each individual game now before we get into the controls i'm just going to do a couple of things to help with getting the game launched because super mario galaxy 2 and super mario galaxy 1 do not run well with vulcan at this moment in time on dolphin emulator so we're going to go into edit game settings we're going to go into graphic settings i'm going to change the video back end to OpenGL because OpenGL actually works better for this game and it reiterates what i say with all my installs and setups is that none of these settings are going to be perfect for every game you're going to have to mess around and you're going to have to figure out what works and what doesn't work and i'm going to show you a couple of other settings that i use for super mario galaxy games to help them run better for example shader compilation mode i usually use hybrid uber shaders but this time i'm going to be using the specialized default settings now with super mario galaxy you're going to want all of your settings to be at the default settings except for compile shaders before starting because i like to have that to get rid of some of the stuttering so in enhancements, internal resolution, we keep it at one times native. There's no way we're getting 1080p on an Android phone. I haven't got the Snapdragon 8 Gen Plus, but I'm pretty sure that you're not going to get 1080p on a game like Super Mario Galaxy on that either. The next thing is in the hack section. We're going to keep the standard skip EFB access from CPU to its default of off. And as we scroll down, some of the other settings that I usually change, like store XFB copies to texture only, going to keep that on. All of these settings need to be the default setting. And if you want to make sure of that, you hold down on the setting and it'll restore the setting to its default value. So if I turn skip EFB access from CPU on, and then I want to change it back to the default just to make sure it is the default setting, it'll clear it and set it to that. So that's the game settings sorted. Next, we're gonna check out how to do the controller itself. So in the settings menu for the game, so I'll just go back and show you that again. I'll hold Super Mario Galaxy 2, hold it down. I'll click edit game settings and I'll go to Wii Input. Wii Remote 1, emulated. Now we need to set up our controller. So we'll start with the extension because we need a nunchuck for this game. This game will not run without a nunchuck assigned to your Wiimote. And for the buttons on C, I usually have C, I just press in the left analog stick on my controller. I'm using the Razer Kishi, but the Xbox controller, the PlayStation 4, the PS5 controller, these all work with this method as well. And then for Z, I like to use the L2 button because it is the ground pound and I like to ground pound with the Z button. For the stick, this is the analog control. So I'm going to press up, up, down, left right on my left analog stick because this is the movement stick swing we do not need to swing and we do not need to tilt but we do need to shake our nunchuck every now and again and i set that to the y button so when it says x i press y when it says y i press y where it says z i press y now this will simulate shaking the nunchuck whenever i press the y button we go back and then we go to the button so a is the jump button i like to use a for the jump button so we're going to press a 
And then B is the back trigger on the Wiimote, which usually shoots Yoshi's tongue or stars. So I set that to the right trigger. We're going to be moving the analog stick to move the pointer on the screen. And it's much easier to press R2 instead of moving your hand over to B, X and Y. Because the second you let go of this analog stick, the pointer moves to the middle of the screen. One and two are not used in this game, so we do not use them. Minus, I set to select, and plus, I set to start, and we don't need the home button because we're not on a Nintendo Wii console. IR features, this is the IR receiver, so this is the pointer that's on the screen that's usually a star, or it's used for Yoshi's tongue. So we press up, up on the right analog stick, down, down on the right analog stick, left, left on the right analog stick, right, right on the right, right analog stick. Now, usually in the game, when you're playing the game and you're not moving the right analog stick, it will be in the center and the star will be in the center and it will be very annoying. And a lot of people do not like that. It is very, very, not frustrating, but it is a mild inconvenience. You can hide the pointer by pressing the hide button here where it says hide and I assign that to X. Now, one of the downsides to this is you're going to always have to have X held for the pointer to be missing from the game. So my logic here is I usually press X to sprint in Super Mario Brothers. So I use X here. So if you're usually pressing B to sprint in Super Mario Brothers, then you can set the hide button to B. So whenever I'm running around, I'm holding X down, I'm pressing A to jump and the pointer is not on the screen. And whenever I am moving the pointer with the right analog stick, my logic is that I am not going to need it hidden. So I'm not going to be needing to press X down. That is the only way to do it as far as I know so far. I wish there was just a button where you press the button and it hides it and you press the button and it comes back on like on the Nintendo Switch version. But that's just not the case on Dolphin Emulator. Swing, we do not need to swing our control in this game. So we're going to ignore those. This isn't Skyward Sword. Tilt, usually I would assign some buttons to tilt or would make a completely different set of controls for the tilt function because some of the levels in this game, they do require you to tilt and use the gyroscope when you jump on a ball, for example, or if you do the gliding missions with the dinosaur. But because we have motion sensors on our Android device, we can now use the motion sensors built into our Android device. And I'll show you how to do that when we get into the gameplay later. You can turn the motion controls off and on whenever you need them. And it is actually brilliant. I managed to get through the levels that I usually cannot play without changing the controls in the settings. And it's beautiful. You're not going to be smashing world records with those motion controls. But you are going to be able to get all the stars, which is a positive. For the shake, I set the shake to the R1 button because I like to use R1 for shake. So this simulates shaking just the Wiimote. If you want to shake the Wiimote and the nunchuck at the same time with this configuration, you press Y and X together. The D-pad, not really used that much in these games. It's mainly for camera stuff, but I set it to the standard D-pad anyway, just in case I do need to use it. And that's it. We're ready to go and get into the game. There's still a couple more things in the game that we need to do to make it a better experience. And we'll get into that now, but that's everything you need to set up the controller. Like I said, I'm using the Razer Kishi, but this works for the Xbox controller, PlayStation 4, and PlayStation 5 controller as well. So, let's start Super Mario Galaxy 2. And these controls work perfectly for Super Mario Galaxy as well, but Super Mario Galaxy is a bit more annoying because all of the menus, you have to use the infrared pointer, and it can be a bit finicky and a bit annoying using the infrared pointer for some of the levels on that, because some of the levels heavily rely on it, whereas with Super Mario Galaxy 2, there is less reliance on it. You only really use it when using your she's tongue so in the main menu here one thing i like about super mario galaxy is i can use the control stick to mess around with the menu something that you can't really do in super mario galaxy one which is very annoying so you have to use the ir receiver but really fast load up 60 frames per second in the hub sometimes that will drop down to 50 or 45 a lot but it's completely playable and it is still a fantastic experience. As you can see, the pointer here, the right analog stick, I'm using the right analog stick to move it around. You can use touchscreen if you want, but when you use the touchscreen, sometimes it does disable the right analog stick, so be careful of that. So you can use the touchscreen to touch around, but it's not really a great experience when playing the game with a controller. It is fantastic, however, when you're using touch controls. So, so let's say you started up the game and the controls are on the screen, the overlay controls, and you want to get rid of them because you're using a controller. If you press back on your 
Android phone, go to overlay controls, and then where it says toggle controls, click that, click toggle all, and all of the controls will disappear, and we get that console-like experience. Another thing we're going to want to do is in the overlay controls, maybe your start hasn't appeared, and that's because the motion sensors are active. So if we go to overlay controls and motion controls here, you can see I've got it set to don't use device sensors. And I said before that you're going to need the motion device sensors for the gliding and things like that. But the problem is if you use device sensors and click OK, you can see the pointer has disappeared. And when I move the right analog stick, it doesn't it doesn't move it and it doesn't appear. And that's because I have to lay the phone flat for it to appear because it's using the motion sensors as if it was a Wiimote. Even when I put motion controls and I set it to without pointer emulation, it still doesn't register it. So I use don't use device sensors up until I get to the part where I'm gliding and I'll show you that in a second. Then I activate the motion sensors and then I complete the game and unactivate them anyway because I've got the shake and everything else that I need to play the game mapped out to certain controls. So let's just check a few things while we're here and then I'll go into the motion controls and the tilt as well. So if I press and hold X, which I normally do to run around anyway, you can see that the pointer is missing from the screen and I can jump, run and play around. But if I need the pointer for Yoshi, so let's go get Yoshi. So I need the pointer for Yoshi, so I let go of X, I move to the right analog stick and then I can use B, the right trigger to get up. Nope, completely missed and fluffed that. I'm going to have to do that again. Cut that. So I can now use the right analog stick to grab the flowers and grab things that I need to eat. And it works as it should. You can use the left trigger if you want. You can change it to the left trigger or the right trigger. I just prefer the right trigger because I'm naturally playing it as if it is kind of like an FPS shooter. But it is entirely up to you. And then as for shake, let's shake the Wiimote. So we can do a little spin. Shake the Wiimote. And then shake the nunchuck. We mote nunchuck together. As you can see, the pointer moves as well. Everything is working as it should. So let's say you've got yourself to Wild Glide Galaxy. You need to use the motion controls to complete this level. Now, usually in the past, I'd exit the game and I'd create a new controller profile that made sure that I could glide using L1 and R1, and I could move forward and backwards using R2 and L2. Then I'd finish the level, I'd come back out of the game, and I'd create the controller profile that I had originally, especially on PC where I have a device with no motion sensors on it. So what we need to do here to activate the motion controls at this particular moment, we press back until we get the blue menu at the side, this lovely blue menu that I love so much. Go to overlay controls, motion controls, and then use device sensors without pointer emulation. Click OK. So this means that when we move the device around, it won't simulate moving the pointer as well. Even though the device does have to be laid flat for the pointer to be on the screen, really doesn't make sense. I hope they change that there. So that means that it is in the neutral position. If we had the pointer emulation on, the pointer will be moving around with us and the phone. So if I shake... It'll do the spinny attack, and now if I go to the glide guy, the little bird, I hate these levels so much. I'm so glad that there's not that many in this game. It's one of the reasons I don't play Super Mario Galaxy 1 as much anymore, because it does actually rely more on the motion controls than Super Mario Galaxy 2. So let's glide, and I'll just show you now. Here's how we glide. Keep it level and flat. There we go. It's ticked to say that it's flat. And then tilt to the left, we'll move us to the left, tilt to the right, we'll move us to the right, down to do a dive. Now, as you're going to see here, this is not a perfect solution. The motion controls are not as intuitive as a Wii remote, but it does mean that I can actually complete this level a lot easier. So perform the nose dive to get into there. Oh, completely missed that. Still very, very finicky and not 100% perfect, but it works to get through these annoying levels and it works on the ball as well. And then to get the motion controls back off, back, overlay controls, motion controls, don't use device sensors, and we're just going to crash into the wall here. But now I can go back to just playing the game without the motion controls if I want to. And that's everything that you need to know to play Super Mario Galaxy 2 comfortably on Dolphin Android. 
all the controls set up, even all the settings and everything that makes it run nice and smooth. As you can see, we are dropping down to 50 frames per second at this point. Most of the time, the game does run roughly 50 to 60 frames per second. It is a Nintendo Wii game after all, and not a GameCube game, and it is a lot more complicated to emulate. So you can see here, we're getting 60 frames per second, and then as we go into the much bigger areas of the level, it kind of drops down to 50 frames per second anyway. But if you found this information useful, then please hit that like button. It does help this channel grow. If you want more Dolphin emulator videos, then please, by all means, hit that subscribe button. You don't need to put notifications on. It's not really that much of a big deal. It would help, but like I understand that not a lot of my videos are for everybody. And I do go through various different aspects of emulation and various different devices. And maybe you just wanted to know about Dolphin emulation. And you have no interest in iPad emulation or macbook emulation or pc emulation i completely understand that but a like at the bare minimum a like does help comments let me know down in the comments if you've got anything better if you've got a better control setup or if you use this control setup and it was successful or what other games you'd like to see controller setups for i'm currently working on one for skyward sword and i'm working on one for all the classic n64 and super nintendo games that you can play on dolphin as well uh let me know if there's any systems you'd like me to look at as well i have windows macbook and ios so i'm going to be looking into all of them for dolphin or maybe you just want a different emulator you want to emulate you want to emulate your ps2 games i have tutorials on that i have i have tutorials on that i have tutorials on how to do that on xbox series s and x as well um anything else really i don't really know what else to say uh like i said i'm just trying to push for as many subscribers and likes as possible because 99 percent of my viewers aren't subscribed to the channel and it would be nice if i could get a few more subscribers within the new year because I do really want this channel to grow in 2023 oh just trying to eat my apples and I'm gonna run in a mess around here I'm rambling on once again this is how most of my videos end nobody's here the analytics have shown me that most people have turned off once they've got the information that, that they need the second I say that's it for this video people switch off or find another video to watch or they go back and they try and get the setup working fine for themselves. So I'm just basically talking into the abyss here. So thanks once again if you're here. If you are here, leave the word sausage down in the comments. We'll see if there's any sausages in the comments. And take care. I hope this video finds you well. Um, have a great new year. Great 2023. 2023 is upon us. And I hope you have a fantastic year. And all your dreams come true. Shit, that one wasn't it. Don't do anything I wouldn't do.